Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, very special edition of Rooster Teeth Podcast. Um, this week, we're joined by Mr. Bernie Burns, Hello. Matt Hollum, CEO, Gray Haddock, uh, supervising producer, uh, and Gus Sarola, uh, as usual. And um, I mean, I don't know. There's some of you, I'm sure, that are watching the podcast who might not read the, the website or might not follow us in various forms of social media, but uh, for those of you who weren't aware already, um, uh, last Thursday, our dear friend Monty Ohm had a simple medical procedure, and afterwards he had an extreme re- allergic reaction. He lost consciousness, and over the course of the last week, he's been hospitalized. He did not regain consciousness, and we are very sorry to say that Monty passed away yesterday. Sunday, February 1st, at about 4.34 in the afternoon. And so, uh, last week we missed the podcast. We did not have a live edition of it. We showed the PAX panel because we were dealing with this crisis at that time, but we weren't yet comfortable enough to really talk about it publicly um, because when Monty lost consciousness, he didn't really have a chance to tell us what his wishes would be. So we wanted to respect his privacy as much as we could. That being said... Um, if we missed two podcasts in a row on Monty's behalf, I don't think Monty would have liked that very much. I don't, th- I don't, I don't think he would have. No, I you don't. Know, despite the fact he, you know, wasn't, didn't feature regularly on the podcast, uh, he was here most Mondays, uh, mooching pizza or, uh, <laughs> watching off on the sides over here. Uh, or, or he would, he would be in his office and as he always did, he always was watching something and making something at the same time. That was yeah. kind of his M.O. And uh, he'd have the Rooster Teeth podcast on, and then he would stop to make sure to tweet at me that we had already talked about this <laughs> or <laughs> tell me in a way that I was wrong. But he also had suggestions. When we were looking for something to talk about, Monty also had suggestions all the time of like, you know, talk about this or do that as well. And sometimes listening very loudly in that little room back there. <laughs> I was always concerned there was going to be a feedback loop. That was yeah. emanating from Monty's corner, you know, in the podcast. Jack um, wrote a journal talking about some of his uh, memories of Monty today, and he posted it on the website. And he uh, told a story I'd forgotten about, which was when we were uh, out shooting the first immersion, which was the uh, video game car. That uh, you know, we were between takes and <clears throat> we were between setups, and uh, we were all standing around, and we were like, "Do you hear heavy metal music? <laughs> like, what, where is that coming from?" And uh, that was the first time I experienced Monty in powered down mode. He was just off to yeah. the side with his headphones in, full blast, and he was uh, totally asleep. <laughs> and we went up. We were like, "Are, are you, are you okay? Do you want to, do you want to turn that down a bit?" And he just like woke up for a second. Was like, nah. It was loud enough that outside, with the wind blowing like twenty miles per hour, you know, at this big wide open space, and everybody's running around yelling, that it sounded like. You know, the music was playing out of the boom box. <laughs> it, was, it, it was directly in his ears, and he was he was just sleeping. It was amazing. He was just out. Yeah, he was hilarious. I'm starting to wonder if I have to keep up the tradition over in the animation department of, of, of just blasting that sound system from time to time just to kind of keep everyone going. Yeah. Should be a rite of initiation, like a... During a, during an all nighter, like the, <laughs> the newest person on the team has to wear the has to wear the headphones and, yeah. and sit there and and animate. The yeah, crazy yeah. thing was is where we filmed immersion. Uh, we didn't realize at the time, but it was a block away from where we are now. Mm-hmm. Like we came out to the old airport because it was the only tarmac where we thought we could run this truck privately without the cops stopping us. You know, with our blow up dolls and Monty and Frank dressed as Yakuza. He they beat the he, shit out of you. I was going to say he beat the shit out of me. He did not. Him, he did not pull punches. He he got me good. I was I had a bad bruise on my side from where he kicked me for uh for like for like a week and a half after that. Was that was very excited. You know, you talk about how his uh, sleep cycle was different, and uh, the Men in Black sleep cycle was. <laughs> I re- I remember once at uh, Ralph Alvarado, we were down there, and um, it was before the the studio was fully fleshed out. It was still kind Ralph Alvarado is our last studio, right? It was the, at the, the, old the place where. You know, and we were like three years for the last three years. Uh, I needed to, to have a meeting. We were doing uh, planning for RTX 2012, I think. And uh, the meeting room, the conference room was taken. And so I said, well, let's just go meet out in, in the warehouse space. I don't think there's anybody in there. I peeked in. There was no one there. So uh, I sat down at a table to have a meeting. 
And uh, we're like halfway through the meeting, and I adjust my feet, and I feel something under the table. Uh oh! Like, what the hell is that? And then he looked under the table, and Monty was curled up taking a nap. Like, I guess he was on his off cycle from his thirty-hour shift, and he had just like decided to, you know, take a nap there right by his computer. And I was like, "We've been having this meeting for like fifteen minutes, and he's stirred. He's just out." I was like, "We got, we got to go somewhere else." Normally, you just have to Surprise. peel him off of his keyboard. You know, he's just yeah. sort of, you know, passed out right at his workstation. But yeah, but it was also it was one of the frustrating things about working with him too is that he was always creating stuff and so we'd be coming up on a major deadline you know for animation sometimes it'd be like 30 weeks in a row we were working on something and it's like hey there's a deadline two weeks it's like money what are you what are you doing he's like i'm making i'm i've been spending the last week of my time making these mechani mechanized robotic angel wings and he like look i attached it to a servo and i can make them flex on their own it's for a cosplay and i was like yeah, that is that good. That's cool. Can you can you not do that for like a month or so? He just built that. He just thought it'd be cool to have a pair of robot angel wings. I'm gonna do that, and he built himself. I don't know if a time that. that he wasn't working on three things at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, constantly yeah. heat of production. We could be crunching on on anything, and um, there's the show in front of him. Uh, there's uh, the next thing he's designing on the side. It could be, uh, you know, uh, ideas for a video game or or what have you. And then he's always thinking one year out in terms of like the next show he'd want to do. You know, you talk about how he's always building things and you know taking things apart and putting them together. You know that emoji with the hearts for eyes? I think that was his face when he saw the 3D printer that we had that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's, I said that to his sister that the 3D printer showed up here and immediately went to Monty's desk somehow. I'm not sure how yeah. that happened. It's the one man QC department for all of Maker right now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many times he had them on the phone where he was needing new parts because he just drove it into the ground or just finding new ways to, you know, try and improve it. Well, if you guys obviously did this gear this way, it wouldn't have been breaking so much. Blah blah blah. And he gave him so much feedback. It was just crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing the thing was but, constantly in production, printing, making stuff, and yeah. Monty bought. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it, it was definitely a big part of Monty's life was dealing with the limitations of things. I always feel like Monty was constantly coming up about the limitations, but also having an appreciation for those limitations because he's always thought the limitations made him that much more creative, trying to figure out how to get that boundless entertainment that he wanted to create, but within the limitations that were just forcing him by when he was making entertainment, essentially. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, we saw him and we've talked about his uh, way to come around limitations, you know, with creative solutions like, you know, ripping keys off of a keyboard so that he won't hit yeah, them accidentally. That was the first experience I had with him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, you know, we, he came down and we bought him a really expensive, really nice laptop. Let's call it what it is. We bought him a nicer computer than anybody else in the company had at the time. We were which was a big so, deal. We were so shoestring. I, I, the company had not bought me a computer yet. I was still <laughs> buying my own computer and bringing my own computer to work at this point. And we bought him this super nice laptop. I was so jealous. And literally one day later, like half the keys are ripped off. And first thing he did was take a screwdriver and jam it into the caps lock key and pop it off, and then the F one like, key you, and pop it what off. What are you doing? <laughs> He's like, oh, well, if I hit that, then, it, you know, it messes up the way I work in the program. So I just want to make sure I never hit it. And I was like, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> it was so hard to look at. Yeah. <laughs> and his keyboard in there right now is completely popped off. I did not know. I Somehow I, this escaped my attention. My desk that I made, when we were at Ralph Albanado, I lost like an office and then I was like kind of free floating for a while. Monty ended up with my desk that oh, I that made. Where's the, the hydraulic one? The plywood one. Yeah, uh, yeah. that yeah. raises and lowers. And of course, uh. he was building something on it and completely like burned part of it. <laughs> There's all these deep gouges in it now. Monty ruined a lot of desks. <laughs> Actually, I was looking at pictures the other day, just going through old photos, and I came across one I had forgotten about, and I turned it, showed it to Sheena. It was like the, it was a moment where Monty had offhandedly said, "Oh, I think I scratched that desk. I might need a new one." I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I came down and looked at it, and the desk was like eviscerated. It was just completely <laughs> destroyed. Had chemical stains from all the crazy, you know, stuff he would use for his epoxies and all that stuff. Oh, it was yeah. just, it was nuts. He burned his own face. He chemically burned his own face one one summer. Oh yeah, right before Comic Con, he like was working with epoxies, mixed them together, and then somehow wiped his face and Ooh. then had huge burns on his face. I was like, Mom, that is not good. You shouldn't be doing that kind of thing. I tell that story to sisters. It was more. It was, it was more efficient than using gloves. It was. He was busier. He what, busier. what is your What is your absolute favorite like Monty Ohm efficiency tip of all uh, time? Uh, well, the, the microwave. It's got to be. It's got. It's right. It has to be the microwave. You, you. So for people who don't know the microwave, it's 
if you have to put something in the microwave for a minute, <laughs> instead of hitting six zero, you hit fifty five. Right. Because it's one number. And it's pretty much a minute. It started yeah. first. It said first it would put in one zero zero. Then you realize he could just put in sixty, and that was faster because it's only two digits. But if he hits five five, it's the same thing. That extra second that you would take to move your hand to hit the different keys was too much repetitively. I so, think yeah. there was another layer too where he go five eight dit, and he could do yeah. it like in a row. Yeah, it was like, yeah, like if he could figure out with his digits, like what was the best way to. To, to make his way so down do to it. the enter button or the. the I don't, he was so obsessed with the efficiency stuff. Like the last time he was over at the house. Like I was washing dishes and he was like, I was talking, he's like looking at me and I could tell he wasn't paying attention to anything I was saying. He was just looking at the sink. And after a minute he goes, your sink is not very efficient. And I was like, <laughs> what? how can a sink be more efficient? It's just like a bowl with you know, the hole and that's, there's not much to it. And he was like, I, I can find a way. I'll make you a better sink. Monty. I'll make you a better sink. Is that what he said? He'll 3D print you a sink. He'll 3D print me a sink. <laughs> I think Monty is personally responsible for me finally uh, learning like a uh, Windows OS keyboard shortcuts and some mm. of the tool. We were, you know, there was, he would go a little quiet or occasionally you just get this hint of a sigh if we're doing editorial reviews. And if you dare use the mouse to navigate to get the file up or whatever, <laughs> those are precious seconds. Yeah. We've been viewing footage oh, man. or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, another computer story. I mean, he held on to Windows XP forever because he didn't like the Windows 7 interface. Yep. Yeah. And then because it, it changed some of his shortcuts. And then, you know, finally, we just could not buy a new computer with Windows XP. I was like, he I'm was sorry, like, Mike. Like, I can make it look like Windows XP. We went through and would like He was searching the themes. on eBay and like... <laughs> Everywhere is like, this is the computer I want, you know, because it's like Windows from 20 years ago. He just would not move. Yeah, yeah it has it to was, be like Poser yeah. 95, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I would be calling manufacturers like, listen, I want the computer you have for sale on your website, but I don't want the OS. Like, can we just get an old copy of Windows XP thrown in? They're like, no, we don't have the driver support. Like, I know you got a guy. You've got someone who's got to be able to do this. <laughs> and eventually, we got him off of that on the Windows 7. Yeah, that was a... We, yeah, and then we had to go through and... uh adjust the theme to give it the XP, the classic feel, because all the Aero stuff took too much resources. Mm -hmm. He didn't want uh, his, his computer wasting time generating all those flourishes when it could be uh, rendering faster and doing those other things. There is that. And of yeah. course, I mean, if you think he's that way about OSs, then, you know, for sure he's that way about his animation software where we're like, hey, man, new version, whatever. And it's like, oh, this one's doing what I need to do. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go to this other tool? It's like, no, this is the one that I'm fast at right now. It's getting what I need to, to you know, it does what I need to do. We're good. Yep. Well, yeah. people on Twitter are saying that we already told the podcast story before about money in the microwave. <laughs> so yeah. They're just keeping keeping the dream alive for Monty. I just want to point out you don't have to you don't have to call us on that. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So, well, we wanted to come on tonight because um, you know Monty was let me, well, everything we've talked about tonight. Monty was somebody who really valued you know, working uh, and really uh, liked doing it. He still did enjoy his life. And some of you are learning for the first time that he was. Married last year, uh, married Sheena. Um, did, didn't talk about that very much publicly, um, although they were inseparable for the course of the last year and a half. Um, you know, like I said at the top of the show, if we can miss one podcast uh, for Monty's sake, uh, when we were at all at the hospital kind of taking care of him or doing what we could to, uh, but there was no way in hell we could get away with missing two on his behalf. There's no way he would have tolerated that. So... Um, but we do want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. Uh, we said it up front, this would probably be a shorter version of the podcast. And, um, I just, uh, I just want to say how much we, we miss Monty already. Um, do you guys have any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, he was a big fan. Yeah. I was a big fan. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we actually, uh, we actually prepared a little video to show you of Monty's work. Um, he's a very bright light, burned for a short time, 33 years, but we love him very much. We miss you, Monty. Hello, Mr. Monty Ohm. Hello, Bernie. I was very excited about the moment my first scene showed up at a convention, no one had any idea what to expect. Got a full house for the Ruby panel, RTX 2014. 
with Red vs. Blue and Rooster Teeth as a company, there's a lot of things we hope to create to make people happy in ways they couldn't, wouldn't expect. Red, white, black, and yellow because of Asian. <laughs> it's, it's easy to forget to sleep when you're working on something cool. So you just work as hard as you can and still it's, there's never enough time. So the thing you gotta learn to is essentially let go. What we end up making is always larger than what we think it'll be. I do believe thoroughly in giving everything you got towards whatever you're doing at the time. My favorite thing this time around was sharing it with everyone else, my colleagues, my friends, who all worked on this project. Oh, for, for the longest time, it was just assumed we ended up here for some reasons that we don't need to think about. No. <laughs> but we tend to be masters of our own fate. The only thing that stops us from doing the really cool things is time. And we're in a huge fan culture at the moment where everything is some, has spawned off of something. If you, if you look at something and if you intend to use it, you have to emulate it, which means you have to understand it. I've landed in a very unique place where if I want to make a costume of something, I can also make the character that it's derived from. Monty, 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 my favorite yeah. person. He's yeah, amazing. At the end of the day, we're still looking at people and they need to behave like people. As an animator, there are things you need to notice that most people wouldn't be seeing. The most important thing, and do this as often as you can, watch movies or watch shows or watch things. Just keep your eyes open. It's a lot of destiny, really. I mean, very few people have the luxury of doing exactly what they want to do as their job. There's never a day where I forget that. Moving forward is, I always think about what's next. So like, I, I'm, I'm super excited to finish what we have so that I can just start working on something else.